You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Baby Beginnings with your host, Stacy Bunyar. Stacy will assist moms, dads, and birth workers through the roller coaster of obstacles and emotions and to help plan for what lies ahead for you and your precious newborn. So please welcome the host of Baby Beginnings, Stacy Bunyar. Thank you for joining us live on this beautiful Monday. Monday morning on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Stacy Bunyar. You're listening to Baby Beginnings. Birth is natural. Delivering babies at home with the help of a midwife is certainly nothing new. Uh, We've been doing it for centuries. And according to ACOG, uh, in the United States, approximately 35,000 births a year are home births. Um, There are women with access to high-quality medical care that choose home birth because they prefer the intimacy of a home and family-centered experience. Um, They want to avoid risks to in-hospital births or desire of or want to avoid a medically centered experience typical of a hospital, uh, among other reasons. Today we have Lauren Olson Sudford, a home birth midwife and owner of Holistic Midwifery Care, here today to teach us all about home birth. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Stacy. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Lauren, can you just start us off by telling us what a home birth midwife is? Yes. Um, I mean, a home birth midwife is what we would have called a traditional midwife um, before we had any kind of certifications or extra little initials that we put after our names, Um, you know, who would have um, gone to the home back in, you know, uh, hundreds of years ago um, to help out with um, a birth. Basically, I think we're probably um, space holders. We, you know, are trained to kind of um, <clears throat> facilitate what, you know, is normal, which at being at home, our normal is sort of a, a wider box than what you have in sort of um, allopathic settings. And, um, and then recognize when things aren't normal and then when we need to think about, you know, transferring for plan B or C or D. Okay. What made you follow this path? Did you have home births yourself? I did not have home births, so I certainly considered it. Um, I think what really cemented it for me was when one of my best friends in college, who was a nursing major, who then became a certified nurse midwife in New York State, who then did um, practice home births for quite a long time and had home births herself, invited me to her first birth. And um, I think then, again, I think just um, my years living overseas, especially in Norway and in England, where there seemed to be more access to different ways of birthing, it wasn't necessarily a a given that everybody was going to go into the hospital. Um, I got to meet a lot of other home birth midwives and learn, um, you know, that in a lot of cases, it's a great option. I imagine it is. Um, So what is the training like for a home birth midwife? Is it the same as a traditional midwife or a hospital birthing midwife? So we have a lot of different types of midwives in in America. We have the certified nurse midwife who does a bachelor of science in nursing program and then does an extra two years getting a master of science in nurse midwifery. And then they are typically licensed in all um, states to practice 
in the hospital, and then it depends on the particular state whether they can practice outside of a hospital setting or not. And then for what we call kind of the traditional direct entry midwives, um, we have everything from uh, a CPM, which is a certified professional midwife, which is um, a national movement um, under the umbrella of NARM, which is North American Registry of Midwives. And there's two paths to becoming a CPM. And you can either go to a particular MEEK accredited school program. There are um, quite a few of those uh, around the states. Our closest one is up in Maine. Um, and then there are a couple online schools that also offer that. Or you can do what's called the portfolio um, process, the PEP process. And that's what I did. And quite a few of the home birth midwives that are CPMs here in Massachusetts also did the PEP um, portfolio process. Um, so the training for me was I needed to demonstrate a certain amount of didactic or academic work, and I chose to go to the Women Craft Midwifery Program in Amherst, Mid um, Massachusetts. I did the um, beginning year and the advanced year, and then a certain amount of apprenticeship where you can pr um, portray a portfolio of 55 births in different settings um, to NARM, and then you sit for um, a written exam, which is um, a seven-hour exam, and then you also do an oral exam and a sort of a physical hands-on demonstration exam to um, advanced midwives to demonstrate that, you know, you have perfected, you know, um, the skills that are required to be an entry-level midwife. Um, so I went ahead and did the CPM. It's not required in Massachusetts. We are... Uh, not an illegal state, but we're also not a legal state. Um, so um, out of hospital birth, midwives are not necessarily uh, formally recognized, though we've been practicing for hundreds of years here. And then there are um, also midwives who uh, have chosen not to become CPMs, but also, you know, um, offer traditional midwifery care. And, and that would be what's called a lay midwife, is that correct? Correct. Um, yes. So the CPM is, was, I think, originally designed to kind of bridge the gap between what was recognized as lay, mid, lay midwives and then the nurse midwives, although I think most allopathic practitioners would still refer to CPMs as lay midwives because we do not have the nursing degree behind us. Oh. Um, so Massachusetts, as you said, it, it's not a, a licensing state. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Correct. Yes. New Hampshire and Vermont are, we are not. Okay. Um, so choosing, um, you, you would think choosing a midwife, um, that's true would be an easy decision. So uh, I guess, can you have a certified nurse midwife birth at home or is that only something you're going to find in a hospital setting? It is possible. Uh, we do have a couple of um, CNMs here in Massachusetts. That is a fairly new um, legal option. Uh, before, and I can't remember exactly the year, but I was at the State House um, when that was being discussed. It's only been, you know, a, a few years that it is um, legal for certified nurse midwives to attend outside of hospital births. And is it true that even though you're trained as um, a CPM, you could, in certain states, maybe... Um, be at risk of criminal charges for practicing midwifery or risk your license? Yeah, so that depends on each state's legislation. So of licensed states, which most, if you're going to have licensure, would recognize that CPM credential or it is okay. part of a part of their deal. Um, as long as you practice within the scope of the rules and regulations of that state, you would be fine. It's if you would do something that is out of scope of their rules and regulations. That being said, of the states that are not licensed, such as Massachusetts, um, 
what we do have, there's always pros and cons to everything, but what we do have is the freedom to be able to work closely with our clients to figure out what makes sense for this particular family, for this particular pregnancy, this particular labor, this particular birth, this particular postpartum. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Baby Beginnings is off to our first break here in BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Um, this is Stacey Bunyar. Don't move. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Col des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Introducing betterhomeandgarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective, and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back. This is Stacey Bunyar, and you're listening to us on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today on Baby Beginnings, we are learning about home birth with Lauren Olson Sudford, owner of Holistic Midwifery Care. You can visit her at www.holisticmidwiferycare.net. Um, and if you have any questions today or you want to call in, um, our number here at the station is 866 451 one four five one. Um, so, Lauren, who is the ideal candidate, or is there an ideal candidate to utilize a home birth? Definitely not an ideal candidate because you can only say that you know um, post birth when everything went really great. <laughs> but um, because we, you know we never know, and I want to stress that you know when we're working with clients, it's always a planned home birth. That's our intention. That's our client's intention. Um, but you know sometimes plans don't go exactly as as you plan. Um, but I mean, a great candidates are healthy. Um, Pregnant moms that uh, don't have any uncontrolled, you know, body systemic issues such as cardiovascular or airway issues or diabetes um, that um, have done, you know, a fair amount of research and education on themselves uh, that really are feeling that planning a home birth is what they truly want. Um, what is not an ideal candidate is somebody who's just wanting to risk out all the things they don't want to have happen in a hospital. And during an interview, how would you steer that person that you don't think is the right candidate? I think, you know, by spending time with people, um, you know, we definitely, at least in my practice, we, you know, offer a free hour-long um, consultation for anybody who's thinking about it. We might have already had a couple of email exchanges, might have had a phone conversation, but then I invite people to come to my home office and, you know, sit down and talk um, about things. So, you know, during that hour, we're trying to cover, you know, um, do you have any outstanding medical issues that would be red flags for us that would, you know, that would risk you out of safely, you know, planning a home birth? 
And then if somebody does, then, you know, we just talk about all the great options. It's a great time to be having babies. Um, You know, there are a lot of options out there. I have clients that, you know, have decided that they want to augment um, their allopathic type OBGYN or CNM care by coming, you know, a few times to see us, our um, appointments tend to run a little bit differently, um, and, or they would like um, to hire us to be a doula for the labor and birth, and then perhaps they even want to have um, postpartum care that we offer, which is quite different than what you have if you had your baby in the hospital. We talk about all the options. So, excellent. So what are some of those different risk factors? Risk factors would be, um, hmm. like I said, uh, anything that's not controllable, that isn't under good management, you know, somebody that has uh, diabetes that's really not under great control, um, that needs, you know, medical attention, we provide midwifery care. Um, Somebody who, um, you know, has sort of a chronic airway issue that isn't very well controlled that could be exacerbated by the pregnancy or, you know, during the labor and birth process. Somebody with, you know, a significant cardiac issue who's under medical now, care. Is that also include women with preeclampsia or can those women still home birth? If somebody actually has preeclampsia, no, that would be a transfer of care. And hopefully we caught it before it developed into preeclampsia. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there, there are different reasons why you might have to break off your arrangement before you even get to home birth. And in, in that fa- case, um, if you have to say, you know what, this is developed, um, hospital is going to be your best option, do you continue your care with them as a doula? Absolutely. I mean, it's sort of viewed that way in the hospital as a doula or as labor support. But yes, we still want to follow through with that continuity of care and, um, you know, try to, to work in collaboration with the hospital providers that will be, you know, picking up the postpartum care once the, the client's discharged. If somebody out there is looking for a CPM, what is the best way to find one? Well, the the best way to find one if you're in Massachusetts is to go to the Massachusetts Midwives Alliance website, which is MMA, massmidwives.org. And otherwise, word of mouth is also a good way to find. There's a few that are practicing in the state that do not belong to the Mass Midwives um, Alliance. Good. And also, you know, asking if they have a doula or if they've worked with a doula in the past. Also, um, there are a couple of Facebook groups, Crunchy Moms, Massachusetts, um, the Mass Doula Facebook group, okay. where people can sort of post questions and ask. I'm thinking about a home birth. Anybody know of anybody? Good. Um, Should they interview multiple midwives to make sure they find someone that, you know, they mesh really well with? Absolutely. Yeah, there are enough of us practicing in this state. Um, You know, there's some, you know, pockets like I'm up in the the way tip of the North Shore in Newburyport where there is not a lot of colleagues. Um, But most of us travel. And it is important, you know, um, if For somebody, because you're going to be working in partnership with this midwife, you know, for, you know, maybe even longer than a year if you come early enough in the pregnancy and we follow through um, the whole fourth trimester with our clients. It's a long relationship, so you want it to be a great fit. Absolutely. All right, we are going to head to a quick break here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Stacey Bunyar. Stay right there. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. 
Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkali, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. And Baby Beginning is back on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Stacey Bunyar, owner of Baby Beginnings New England. And we have been talking to home birth midwife, Lauren olson Sidford. So now that we have picked um, a, a home birth and um, a midwife, what else do I need to do to start that planning process? So what we usually do at the beginning is have um, the first appointment I usually allow for up to two hours. It's a, you know, getting to know you uh, appointment, uh, lots of questions. Most of our prenatals run for at least an hour. I usually try to allow for an hour and a half for each visit, especially at the beginning of the pregnancy when you're seeing your provider, you know, once a month. There's a lot going on, you know, between, say, two months, three months, three months to four months, four months to five months, a lot of questions. Um, and, you know, we, we call it holistic midwifery care because we care about everything. You know, how are you eating? How are you sleeping? What are you eating? How is it all coming out? Are you exercising? <laughs> How's your stress level? <laughs> how, what's going on with the family? How's work going? Yes. So, you know, there's a lot to kind of cover. Um and then um, during our appointments, you know, the actual, um, you know, fun parts of, you know, listening to the baby or measuring the belly and all that really doesn't take very long. Um, but it's all the other parts of it, of lots of handouts, lots of questions of, you know, how do you feel about this? You know, what is your ideal birth? What are you hoping for? You know, how can I best, you know, help? facilitate that for you or hold the space for you to be able to do that. Are you also putting in um, education for them too, or do you send them out um, to have them do their childbirth classes, whether they're at a hospital or um, a smaller type setting, um, childbirth education center? Um, Do you send them to those two or, or, or ask them to attend those? as well as whatever they're going over with you? Sure. I mean, when you're going to work in a partnership with a home birth midwife, that's exactly what it is. It's kind of a partnership. So I, from my end, I look at it as figuring out what do they know, what do they not know, um, and how to build up their toolbox. Um, likewise, that I would do with a doula client, too, that's you know, planning a, a hospital birth is, you know, what makes sense for this particular family and and how best can if they don't have all of that knowledge how could they get that would it be you know through you know the bits and pieces that i'm giving or should i actually run a childbirth class for them or am i running a group class right now or <laughs> you know which which particular method you know might resonate best with them some people love hypnobirthing or hypnobabies or um you know, birthing the easy way, or there's a lot of different choices out there. So, yeah, it's trying to to work with people to figure out what's best for them. 
And as a home birth midwife and you're doing prenatal visits, is the women women also getting OBGYN office visits too um, or a combination of both or are they typically just with you? I would say typical is they're just with us, you know, with one of us. You have a primary midwife who sees you for all of your um, prenatals and will do all of your postpartums. And then when we are planning a home birth, there's always a second midwife who's on board um, to be there, and sometimes three or a student, depending on the situation. Um, But, yeah, uh, during your um, prenatals, you're working exclusively with that midwife. So the the advantage, one of the pluses that we can offer is the continuity of care and also that you know who's coming to your birth. Okay. Um, And so they meet with all those other women also, correct, beforehand that may attend? So what we do is, yeah, so for my clients, I usually offer a pretty deep discount if they want to come to my home office for the bulk of their prenatals. But even if they choose that option, I always do a home visit, usually around 36, 37 weeks. And we invite that second midwife who we're planning to have come. The issue is that all of us have our own clients, so while well, we'll have it on paper, and it almost usually works out that way, that the, that is going to be your second midwife who comes. Um, sometimes, you know, she could be at a birth herself, and then it's going to be um, somebody else. But Massachusetts is great. We have some, some great um, partnerships amongst all of our colleagues. Excellent. And what equipment do you typically bring with you for a birth? So when people are planning a home birth, um, we have a, I actually have a home birth supply list that, you know, I send out, you know, usually when they're around um, getting into that eighth, eighth month of pregnancy. And so th- there's some basic supplies that they can gather themselves, such as check pads, and um, want them to have, you know, a certain number of receiving blankets, lots of towels, lots of wash rags, especially if they're planning um, to use a labor pool or have a, a nice big tub themselves and they want to be in and out of the water. Um, and then what midwives usually bring are gloves and a fetoscope or a Doppler to be able to listen to the, the baby's heart. Um, and, you know, basic um, supplies like we use during the prenatal, being able to, you know, take temperature and blood pressure, um, take the pulse uh, to do vital signs if that's, you know, what the clients would like for their care. And uh, then we bring some um, anti-hemorrhagic agents that um, are training because we are out of hospital. Um, we have a little bit, bit of a different toolbox than you would have in a hospital of using herbs and traditional Chinese recipe, remedies and homeopathics and essential oils. Um, and then we have, uh, we're all trained for neonatal resuscitation. So we um, also bring a, an ambu bag for the baby for on the rare occasion when the baby might need a little bit of help. Awesome. So how are you clamping the core? Are you, do you bring clamps and, um, like, a birth kit <laughs> yes. of some so sort? My, <laughs> yes, I have a variety of, of things in my birth bag. <laughs> um, but uh, my preference is to not do anything until the placenta is out. Um, that way, I'm assured that the baby got all the blood volume that it needed. There was a homeostasis between the baby and the placenta, and uh, at that point, there's really no blood flow going back and forth, so it's very easy just to use what we call cord tape. kind of looks like shoelaces, um, but it's, it's sterile, and, you know, tie the baby's cord off that way um, if they're going to do that. If they're planning a lotus birth, then that's a whole other topic of nobody's <laughs> doing anything <laughs> to that. But yes, but but we also have the plastic clamps and then there are these Hesseltine stainless steel ones from Germany that I've used too. So what's your philosophy on placenta encapsulation? Is it something that you support? Um, I think that's up to each birthing family. Uh, and and it's up to me to decide if that's, you know, something that, you know, I can support or not. Uh, I support everything from lotus birth to, you know, um, we had one client who did little sushi rolls with her placenta and every day would shoot one back. Wow. Well, thank you for that. 
Uh, this is your host, Stacey Bunyard, and Baby Beginnings needs to move to a commercial break right now here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we return, we'll be talking about what happens during an emergency. Be right back. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C., Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Baby Beginnings is back on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is your host, Stacey Bunyar, and we are talking home birth today with Lauren. Lauren, where, what, what happens in an emergency? So you're having, you know, um, a birth, and, and there's different situations, I imagine, that can arise during an emergency. Um, so tell us what are those different things that might send you to the hospital or uh, what the plan is. Sure, that's a great question. And um, that is something that, you know, each birthing family needs to consider, too, are what are the pros and the cons of all birth settings? You know, what's available at home, what's not available, what are the protocols and um you know, advantages and limitations of a hospital setting or a freestanding birth center, which we don't have in Massachusetts. Um, New Hampshire has two, but um, or I think three now, <clears throat> or a hospital-run um, birthing center, you know, which is on a hospital campus such as the Mount Auburn facility or the North Shore Birth Center at Beverly Hospital. Um, but no, those are really great questions, and um, it's great timing because I had just come back last week from a um, week-long seminar by Mercy in Action called Expect the Unexpected. So it was four intense days of, (laughs) you know, uh, reviewing all the potential emergencies, uh, not just in pregnancy, but also in labor and birth and postpartum. And Mercy in Action has um, their own midwifery school out in Idaho, but they also have um, a whole bunch of birth clinics up in the Philippines. They've been there for over 30 years, and they have all the kind of simulations, mannequins, and yeah. So um, it's pretty fresh on my mind, uh, <laughs> all the things that can arise, because we don't necessarily see them. You train for them in midwifery school, and then, like I said, um, it's every two years we're recertifying for a neonatal resuscitation program and then for um, – BLS as a healthcare provider, and I alternate my years. So one year I'm doing the healthcare, and the next year I'm doing the NRP. Um, but if you're not seeing it all the time, you know it is good to you know run through the skills and drills. So um, for uh, you know we've already risked out through the pregnancy. You know if there's something emergent, and so we're transferring our care to an OBGYN. But during the labor. Um, Emergencies could be um, a cord prolapse, 
where the cord is coming before the baby, and that's sort of a visual, it, can I see the baby's head and the baby's going to be coming, you know, shortly after? And if it's not, then that is definitely a transport. Most of our transfers of care are not done by ambulances. Um, they're usually because of a really long labor or labor dystocia, um, or I call it the labor from hell, where, <laughs> you know, the the pain relief options that a hospital can provide are sounding pretty good and reasonable. We live in a compassionate age where we don't have to, you know, stick at home like we would in the 1600s. And, um, but, you know, for cord prolapse, that is a more emergent uh, situation. Um, there's always, you know, a, a potential risk of hemorrhage. So um, you need to be aware of that. And then, again, it's a triage of, you know, where is it coming from and why is it happening and what do I think would best resonate to remediate that problem. And sometimes that's a transfer of care. Other times we handle that at home. Um, I mean, there's always a risk of, of, of shock in any situation. Um, let's see. There could be a surprise breach or a surprise twin. That's oh. pretty rare. Um, <laughs> so you said I not everything twin. is ambulatory. So um, you have a mom and she's laboring hard uh, or, I mean, if it's a hemorrhage, would you take an ambulance? Oh, wait, do you still put them in the car? It, it, <laughs> it depends on what kind of a hemorrhage. That is something that we do train a lot for. Um, and, and we should say when we're talking about hemorrhage, we're talking about like somebody's, you know, seriously losing their blood volume as opposed to just there's blood. Right. Um, right. And not your and normal not everybody reacts. Blood. Exactly. And, and some people react, you know, some people have, you know, less than what we call kind of the average amount of blood loss and they feel, you know, very faint. It's, um, you know, very... It, you know, they're just very sensitive. And then others have lost, you know, a bit more than what we would call the average blood loss and feel fine. So it's all about kind of assessing the situation. It's kind of like a three-legged stool. It's always how's, how's the mom, how's the baby, how's the labor. And, and managing uh, those hemorrhages as a holistic midwife, are you managing that with medicine or herbs or both? We're using uh, herbs and we are using um, – well, those of us that have trained in homeopathy, homeopathics, um, there's uh, traditional Chinese um, herb that I use, um, and then there are manual techniques, which we use. But again, the, the whole question is, you know, why is there this much blood? And usually if it's happening postpartum once the baby is out is the placenta still in or is it out because that those are two different situations right so and the answer, i guess i guess the simple answer was no we're not necessarily always going to the hospital okay we go to the hospital you, when the things that we know aren't working do you have a relationship with um physicians or hospitals if the labor is not going as planned there are um, there are practitioners in um, most hospitals that you know we go to that we are familiar with, um, but there are no formal partnerships or relationships. Um, my local hospital, for example, invited me to a lunch a couple of years ago just to talk about transports and how can we make those you know as smoothless as possible when we're going. That's excellent. Um, so when you get to the hospital, do you speak to the emergency room physician or the OB on call about the client's medical history? Um, because they right. haven't been seen. So do you, are you the one doing that? Is the partner the one doing that? Um, and, and just filling because in what's happened partner, throughout right. the birth? <laughs> Yes, because we work in partnership with our clients. We're always advocating for them to speak for themselves. Um, if it's a true emergency and we're going by 911, then, you know, that's a whole different ballgame. 
if we are walking, if we're going in cars and we're walking, we've usually called ahead. And um, depending on, you know, if the mom's really in active labor, she's not really going to be making the phone call herself. Um, so we talk about that during our prenatals of in that situation, would you want me to be advocating for you? Do you want me to call? And, you know, do you want me to share your chart or how much of your chart do you want me to share? with that okay. provider. And so then, yes, I'm making the direct call and saying, you know, I'm working with client X, we're at this, and this is why we're not comfortable being at home anymore, and we're planning to come in. All right. That's some great information. Time for a short break on Baby Beginnings. This is Stacy Bunyar on BBM Global Network. Stay right there. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is, in fact, a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. This is Baby Beginnings coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Stacey Bunyar. Lauren from Holistic Midwifery Care has been talking to us today about home birth um, for your labor choice. For more information on how to reach her, you can go to www.holisticmidwiferycare.net. Um, so right before the break, we were talking about uh, the emergency plan, what happens when things don't go right. Um, Lauren, are you typically received well by hospital med- medical staff when you arrive? Yes. Um, I think, you know, if you are reasonably articulate and, um, you know, the client or the midwife can explain, you know, um, how the pregnancy has been going, how the labor has been going, what are the reasons why we're not comfortable being at home anymore. Um, yeah, things go very well. Great. I, and what gestational ages are you comfortable doing at home? We typically do 38 uh, weeks until the baby comes out. We so don't have even a cutoff at- date at the end of pregnancy. <laughs> That's awesome. So if they're 42, 43 weeks, you're like, your body's going to do this when it's ready. Um, do you induce if, if if mom is getting to 42 and a half weeks and, and nothing's happening? No, we do not do any in- inducing. No, no. I mean, there are gentle, you know, tips that, um, you know, people have, you know, heard about or, or whatever, you know, that they can try going to their acupuncturist or um you know, they can try, you know, walking up a hill or alternate curb walking or eating the whole raw pineapple or whatever. But, you know, we don't <laughs> do any inducing. <laughs> you don't do, uh, like, sweeping the membranes or anything like that? There's always a risk, you know, when you're going to do something like that, that, you know, if you, you know, end up being too vigorous and the water breaks, well, now you are, you know, more on a time clock. 
Um, and every time that you know you're doing a vaginal exam, you're even with the most sterile technique, it's still very invasive. So, um, no. Best <laughs> <laughs> labors are usually the ones that start on their own. Yep. Absolutely. Um, And as a holistic midwife, do you offer massage and Reiki or other natural tools um, for pain management and relaxation throughout the labor? Yes, um, I have. uh, I'm a Reiki practitioner, um, so I did the the three levels um, to be um, a master practitioner of that. Um, and I also, I've done the acupressure in the labor room training. Um, so I offer some, you know, I'm not a licensed massage therapist, but, you know, I do offer some um, techniques, massage techniques. And uh, I'd say probably our presence is the biggest one. Um, just having your head and your ha- hands and your heart there for your client is probably, um, you know, but we're also making suggestions similar to doula work of, you know, water therapy, of movement, activities. Um, When you're at home, you have a lot more uh, tools available for changing up the scene. Now, um, do you bring birth tubs as a home bird midwife, or is that something the clients rent? So I had two... um, Birthing pools, and uh, uh, the la- the second one just bit the dust um, last spring. So right <laughs> now, I do not have any of my own um, pools. But that's you know obviously something we talk about too uh, with our clients. Of if you're interested in that, it's you know pretty easy to get the what we call the aquarium kitty pool on Amazon.com, or you know you can get the fancy fancier ones that are listed as birth pools on your waterbirth.com or some of the birth supply companies. Um, or there are uh, a couple of um, folks that actually rent out more of the hard-sided ones that come with heaters that you can have like your own personal spa. You know, and then some people are really super duper lucky to have a great, nice, deep bathtub in their own home. So my question really is, how do you get all that water out after? Like some people have it in the middle of their living room. I see in pictures. I've never attended a home birth with a tub. So you have this giant pool in the middle of your living room. And now it's not just water. It's water. It's birth stuff. Um, yeah. and, and you have to empty so, this. Yeah. I'm going to say, I, I think pr- pretty much probably most um, midwives that are, you know, loaning out their um, birth pools also have some pump that they can wow. use. But we also, um, there's the old-fashioned siphoning out with the, with the same hose that you use to fill it. And you just want to have the tub placed somewhere where it's either near a sink, a bathtub, or a window. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> um, and yes. so now you've been with the mom for, I don't know, 20 something hours. You have labor. Would you join her in active labor labor or before that? I always tell my clients, I'll come when you ask for me. Um, but if they're not particularly asking for me, then it's more of a judgment call of, you know, when, when to go. Um, that's something I don't know that we're ever going to perfect because um, life's not predictable. <laughs> uh, usually we, you know, a general rule is that, you know, the primary midwife will come when somebody's in active labor, meaning that, you know, their contractions are a minute long, they're, um, you know, uh, four minutes apart that they've been doing that for some amount of time doesn't have to be a whole hour but that they're feeling like the labor is intensifying and that it's very active meaning they're up and they're needing to move during the contractions and they're you know having to focus on their breathing um, and not necessarily chatty during the contraction it's usually when the primary will come and she's alerted the second midwife you know that she's on her way but then things can change you can get a phone call while you're you know on your way over to the home that oh you know things are speeding up and then now you're telling the second midwife come now or sometimes you get there a little bit on the earlier side and you're hanging out for quite a while until you need your second midwife we're just trying to respect, you know, that we're the invited guests to the birth. Right. 
And while we've been, you know, invited for our, our expertise, watch pots don't usually boil. <laughs> Um, so I'm so always what looking did, for when I do a home visit for, you know, is there a separate room where I or I and the other midwife or if there's, you know, three of us, we can go hang out without having to be right in their space. Or if not, you know, if it's during the daytime, what's nearby? Is there, you know, the public library close by? Whole Foods is a great place to hang out where you can get something nutritious to eat and, you know, sit for a little bit. Um, yeah. Great. All right, we need to head to our last break here on Baby Beginnings, BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Stacey Bunyar. Um, and we, when we return, Lauren will give us a little more information on deciding on home birth. Stay right there. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back. This is your host, Stacey Bunyar, owner of Baby Beginnings New England, and you're listening to Baby Beginnings on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Um, we are talking home birth. So... What does the postpartum period look like? The baby arrives, um, you've taped off the cord. Now what? How long are you there after the baby is delivered? Typical is that we stay about four hours after the birth. Um, we're usually not in any hurry if we don't have any question about, you know, baby breathing or any bleeding issues. Um, we're not in a big hurry to do the newborn exam because that, that golden hour is really, you know, for the family to have. They'll never get that time back again um, to be together. You know, we pop in here and there just to check, see if everything's going okay. But, um, yeah, so I would say, you know, somewhere around an hour and a half, two hours later, the family starts asking, you know, wondering, like, how much the baby weighs and all that things. So then we do a 90-point newborn exam um, to, you know, we've already done our sort of ob observational uh, exam of the, of the baby, but now we do sort of our formal one. And, um, and then, you know, there might be some cleanup. We want to make sure that everybody's had something to eat, that the mom can get up and be able to walk to the bathroom by herself. Um, yeah, and then, you know, tuck everybody back up in bed before we leave. And then for my practice, um, I usually do a day one visit, um, sometimes for repeat clients. I, um, I, I might, you know, do day two to visit, you know, if we, we used to call it a 24 hour visit, but if the birth happened at 4 a.m., I'm not coming back at 4 a.m. the next day to, <laughs> to check everybody out. Um, so yeah, so day one or two visit, and then again, I'll do a day three or day four visit, and then a day seven visit. So in that first week, they've seen me three times. And then it's usually, now it's a gentle weaning of then I'll space it out to a two week, four week, and a six week visit. And then there's an optional 12 week visit to close out the fourth trimester. And those are all done in the home. That's excellent. Um, so if there's a tear during birth, is that something you suture up? Yeah, so we are trained uh, to be able to repair um, everything up to a second degree tear. And again, it just takes a lot of triage of figuring out, you know, is this best left alone and it's going to heal nicely on itself? Or do we need to, you know, use one of the different modalities to try to um, approximate those tissues back together. Um, I'm pretty strict when um, I, you know, if somebody has had any kind of a tear of really wanting them to lay low and rest, don't get dressed for a week. Um, that sets the tone for all of your visitors, too, um, <laughs> that, you know, really enjoy that baby moon of having the baby with you. There's plenty, plenty of time afterwards to be up and around doing things. But, yep. 
Um, and are you also supporting the breastfeeding um, during not only that first initial period, but during your follow-up visits if they're struggling? Yes, absolutely. So all of the postpartum visits are um, a quick exam of the baby and then um, a, a baby weight check and then evaluating the nursing and then a check on the mom. And if we have any questions, um, we love to refer out to especially the lactation um, consultants that will do home visits. Are you weighing the, visit, uh, the baby during all of those visits? To, to make sure yes, there's weight gain, the or are they decline. going? To... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they could be yes. seeing their pediatrician, yeah. of, um, and then. Correct. Yeah, and at some point, you know, if we don't have any questions, um, parents usually aren't bringing their babies into the pediatrician during that first week. But um, after that, then they're following up with their family doctor, or their pediatrician too, as well as as our follow up. What are some of the obstacles you have to overcome to perform your job? I think there's a you know there's a general sort of um, lack of education that we've experienced in in you know say the last you know 70 years or so that you know birth is part of life it's just a normal you know life cycle and babies come out one way or another um, and most of the times they come out really well being left alone so I think there's you know just a lack of general awareness that this is an option to you know work with a home birth midwife even if you are planning a hospital birth. Um, and then I think there's a lack of uh, awareness that not all home birth midwives, but in my practice, I also will do postpartum visits for women no matter where they have birthed. So even if you've had a, a hospital birth, you could still sign up and get postpartum care. I really loved learning more about this topic, as I always personally wanted to have one myself, but I was considered too high risk. I'd like to thank you, Lauren, um, from Holistic Midwifery Care for coming on the show today and giving us such great information about home birth midwifery. Uh, you can reach out to Lauren for questions or services at www.holisticmidwiferycare.net. This is your host, Stacey Bunyar. Thank you for listening to Baby Beginnings on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be back next Monday, 9 a.m. Have a beautiful week. You've been listening to Baby Beginnings with your host, Stacey Bunyar. Tune in each week as Stacey will guide you in making better and informed decisions regarding you, your baby, and your family. Here on Stacey Bunyar's Baby Beginnings. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.